and I would like to announce a talk from Olivier Goffard, uh, uh, a co-founder of Wabok, uh, a, a partner of the Qt company. And Olivier will be talking about uh, how to improve your productivity with Clang tools. Thank you, Olivier. Welcome. Um, so what is this, question about, this presentation about? Um, it's about, um, we will talk about what is Clang and how it can be used to, to help you to develop software. And so we'll talk a bit about the sanitizer, some tools, and we'll talk about how you can write your own refactoring tool. It's, it's only a 25 minutes presentation, so we'll barely scratch the surface. I just want to to show you a bit of the tools so you can later Google them or, or do some research later if you find uh, them I uh, please you. So about me, I started working with Qt in the Qt one time as a KDE developer. I joined Trolltech to, to develop on Qt and then later I created my own company called Wabok. We do software consultancy and we also have a nice online code browser. You should check it out if you haven't done so. So, what is Clang? Well, you might know, know it as the compiler on Mac, but it's actually working on several platforms. And it's the front end to the LLVM compiler uh, for C and C++ and Objective-C. And it, it's a, a bit different from the other compilers in the sense that it's a set of modular libraries that we can use not only to compile, um, but you can do a lot of things with all those libraries. What can we do? We can do a compiler, of course. Uh, that's Clang. Um, but we can also use those libraries to integrate and to have the code model to under so the IDE understands C++. And so that's how we can do highlighting, completion, and IDEs like uh, Qt Creator is now moving to, to Clang for the code model, or KDevelop is already using it. Um, any tool that has an understanding on, of the code can also do static code analysis. We can write refactoring tools. Even QDoc is probably going in the next release going to move um, to Clang. So this is also a project I've been working on to port QDoc to, to Clang. Um, we can also do an online code browser. So that's also a product I've been Working on it, it also using Clang to understand the code, and so you can browse it. Or you can also re-implement Mock. It's another project I've been working on. Um, so Mock doesn't use Clang, but um, this is just a prototype research project. And yes, it is possible to to use Clang to uh, to parse the header file to to do what Mock does. So, um, this is the, the diagram from, from Wikipedia on compiler. How does a compiler work? Um, it's basically divided in, in several components. You first have the, the front end. The front end takes in input the, the programming language, and then transform it to some internal representation known to the compiler. And then you have the middle end, with, which can do a lot of optimization in this code, and the back end, which produces the machine code, the executable. And in this, in this situation, Clang really is the, is the front end. And it takes C and C++ and generates LLVM bytecode. Um, so how does a front end work? You first take your input language, C. You split it into tokens. So the tokens are basically the, the words, in a way, like each identifier or keyword is a different token. In C++, you have a preprocessor, so you need to expand macros, include the, the headers. And then, that's the inter interesting part. That's also the most difficult. Um, you take all those tokens, and you generate the AST. And from the AST, we can generate the, the LLVM bytecode, which then the other uh, component can, can uh, use. 
Um, are you familiar with the concept of AST? Um, so the AST is basically uh, it's a, a representation of the code um, that is that is machine readable. So it's the abstract syntax tree. So in this, for example, if you have an expression with um, like operators, it basically will try to to compute a tree where every node is some some item in the in the code. So if you have, for example, a plus will be a node and the the one and the two would also be nodes, or if you have a structure, you would have a node for the structure, and all the methods would be child, and and all the types would be child, and all the contents of this of this uh, all the contents of the the method would be a child of the method. And so there is a nice um, to see the AST. There is a nice. Um, a command that we can pass to Clang, we can tell Clang, show me the AST. So this dash x Clang means that the next argument will be passed directly to the to the internal um, front end. And so I will do it live. And so for the for the previous code, we have. Um, so it, Clang just dumps the AST. We see that every everything starts with a transaction, transaction unit node. Then we have a, bit, a bunch of, of building stuff, which I'm skipping. And then we have a node for the we have a node for the definition of the structure foo. And every method, so bar and baz, have their own nodes. And then the code is there as well. You, we see those binary operator plus, and all the all the code is um, is a node. And so this this representation, this AST, Clang gives it to you as, as some data structure, and you can you can iterate over it. You can do stuff. You can transform it, and you can also match uh, something. And when you write your own tool, this. Uh, to show the AST like this is quite useful because sometimes you want to know in which nodes do this this or this pattern expands. So you look at it and then you look at the documentation. Or for example, sometimes there are some some hidden nodes like here. You have an implicit cast expression that you wouldn't think appears, but they they are quite important. Um, so let's move on to to the sanitizer. So the sanitizer are a tool um, to help you debugging your code to identify, for example, undefined behavior or, or bugs in your in your threaded application. So to who is using QMake? QMake, yes. And who is using CMake? Uh, so it uh, seems like okay, I'm covering most of it. Uh, who is using something else? Yeah. <laughs> Cubes. Yeah. So, um, first, you might want to configure Qt, Qt itself with the sanitizer. The reason you want to do that is because, so I took a wrong example here with the undefined, but in so, some sanitizer, like the thread sanitizer or the memory sanitizer, need Qt to be also compiled with the sanitizer so they don't, so for example, in, in the case of the thread sanitizer, it needs to know that um, Qt is locking mutexes, so it needs to know, it, it needs to be able to in, to inspect Qt mutex itself to see that it does the right thing. So you might want to configure Qt itself with a sanitizer. Otherwise, it's just a matter of passing the the f sanitizer f, san, f sanitize equals and then the name of the sanitizer to the in the build system. So. Um, so the, the build system can can pass it pass that to Clang, so it introspects your code. Um, so let's talk about undefined behavior. So undefined behavior is one of those fancy features of C++, which um, which is a bit hard to detect because your code might be very well working once, but it's still it's still invalid code, right? So in in this case. 
you just have a function that, that have a, maybe a bar argument, some base class, and you, you cast it to my class with a static cast. Um, how, how could this be an undefined behavior? So for example, if, if bar is not an instance of my class, it would be an undefined behavior. The same if you multiply two integer, if, it, if the result cannot be, is, is too big, is, if it overflows, it's also an undefined behavior. And most of the time, this kind of bugs, they, you do, you, it, it can work because the compiler is not optimizing, but then you update your compiler and then it optimizes better, and then you see a lot of weird results and you don't know what happens. It's, it's probably undefined behavior. And so how does the sanitizer work? Well, it will, it will add some, some fake, fake code. So this is pseudocode, right? But it, 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 like it injects some code to some runtime. Um, so it checks, is the object bar of the right type? So it does that using the uh, RTTI. And it will also check, oh, is, is those, are those integer big enough or sm small enough that I can multiply them without overflowing? And so you, you run your program, and if, if you indeed have, have those bugs, the sanitizer will show you, will tell you at runtime, ah, this class was not of type my class, so it's an error in, on, the, on, the right, on this line of code, or this overflowed, so another error that needs to be fixed. So in addition to the undefined behavior sanitizer, there is also the address sanitizer. It use, it's a bit like Valgrind, if you know Valgrind, but it's much faster because it does that at, at compile time, it adds the instrumentation, so Valgrind emulates the whole CPU in a way, while, while um, here we, we implement, we instru instrument and the optimizer can also already quite optimize all those, in, all, all those instrumentation. So it uses a, sh a shadow memory to see that for it instruments every access. Every time you access a pointer, it checks was this pointer allocated before, or was, and if it was not, then it throws a warning, or was it already freed? If it was freed, it throws a warning. And it, and the memory sanitizer is like the address sanitizer, but it also tracks use of uninitialized memory. And this is one of those sanitizers for which you also need to compile Qt with the sanitizer because otherwise, if Qt has initialized the memory, it needs to know that because it needs to instrument Qt that will uh, initialize the memory. So it will uh, write in, in the shadow memory that the memory was initialized. Um, so the thread sanitizer records all the, your memory operation, it records if it's atomic, so it knows all the synchronization points, and if it sees that, if it sees that one write was done in a thread and then a read was done on the same memory location in another thread, it can see was there some, was there some ordering between those two, if not, it throws a, it throws a warning. And again, you need to compile Qt with a thread sanitizer for, otherwise, if you use Qmutex, it will not work. So if you compile Qt with a, with a thread sanitizer, then it will instrument Qmutex itself, and this will magically work. So all those sanitizers, they also re require, if you want to avoid too many false, false positives, they also require a, a recent version of Qt, like 5.9, because a lot of work has been done to fix all those, all those false positives in Qt by, by KDAB and by myself. Let's, moving, let's move on to tooling. So a lot of tools with Clang needs a so-called compilation database. So this is just a file, it's a JSON file, which has instructions on how to how to compile each file, because the, the, the tool will need to know 
um, what are the what are the, the definitions, what are the include paths, and so on. So this this JSON file contains the list of every file and what's the command needed to compile it, so it knows all of this. And so how do we generate this compilation database? Well, we don't write it by hand, of course. So depending of your of your build system. Um, the easiest really is CMake or anything that, that can do Ninja, then you just, um, there are commands to just export the, combi the compilation database. It just generates that for you. Um, Cubes as well has it. But if you're using QMake, which apparently many st are, st are stuck with this, then um, there's uh, no solution out of the box. Um, but th there are some tools like uh, Beer, which you can you can tell QMake to use Beer as a compiler, and Beer will redirect to your normal compiler and intercepts all the call and generate this compilation database. Another thing that I'm personally doing is to, uh, with a, a, a Perl script, I pass the output of make dash n, so dash n stands for dry run, and so this. And the other arguments are there to to continue if there are errors and things like that, and only do it once at a time, otherwise we have a uh, parallel mix-up. So I'm parsing this output of this, and then I generate the, the compilation database, all of that. Um, so the first tool I will talk about is Clang Tidy. And Clang Tidy is a tool that that adds warning to your code and also allow to refactor some of the things, to modernize or to, or to check for, for bug-prone codes or common mistakes with some of, some of the APIs. So for example, we've been running, we've been running Clang Tidy over the source code to add null pointer and all the header. So, um, to have, have the null petir macro, or to add the, the override macro for all, all the functions that, that override. Um, so, so that's very useful to, to, do, to do global on, on very huge code base, to do a lot of changes like this automatically without having to do, to do everything manu manually. And then um, come Clazy. So Clazy is a bit like it's very similar to Clang Tidy, but it's specific to Qt. So this was made by, uh, by people from KDAB. And it can be used as a compiler plugin, so you can put it in your CI system or just in your, when you type make, and it adds warning uh, uh, that are specific to, to Qt. So, so there's here a list, a huge list of, of uh, I don't think it's even complete because it's overflow there. Um, a, a huge list of, of everything. So, for example, it can tell you, okay, this you're, you're using a Qt container here, and it, it's going to detach there. So you probably want to use a const function, or you shouldn't use this. On, you shouldn't use the r dot r dot r on a Qt string. You should use dot r. So it has all the best practice of Qt. It detects it, it and it shows warning of common mis misuse, and it can also do some refactoring. Um, so, for example, here I have, um, so this is just it's, uh, the onCloud client, and I'm going to run Clazy on it. So I'm telling Clazy to, with this environment variable to, f to, fix, to fix the old style connect. And so I'm, I'm running it as a standalone tool, and it will compile the code, and um, basically, basically it will tell Warning, you're using the old style connect. And by the way, I fix, fixed it for you. And so I'm going to abort this. And then, and then it fixed it for me. So then um, all the usage of the old style connect were replaced by the, by the, new, by the, by the new solution. And so you can read, read the readme before. Yeah, I mean, there is some, some warning. But we've done that in, in OnCloud. We've done that. And so far. We didn't see any problem with it. Um, so to replace a huge, yes, question? 
Yes. So in that case, so there are cases where it cannot do it automatically. So the question was, what happens if this, the, the signals and slots are overloaded? So indeed, um, in this case, it, a Clazy will tell, um, uh, I cannot fix that for you, so you, you, that you need to do manually. So there are cases when it, when it cannot do it for, for one or, or reason or the other, then it, it leaves your code like this, and, and then you have, so there are still some, uh, but it works for like maybe 80, 85 percent of the cases, just some random number, and then you have some manual, manual thing to finish it. But it's already a, a huge gain to, uh, uh, to, to fix like that. Um, and, there's the, and then there is all the other checks um, that are specific to Qt. Um, another tool is Clang Format. So um, it's very um, when you want to have a, a, a coding style, which is when you don't when you don't want your developers to be picky about about the coding style. Should there be a space there? How, how big should the lines be? Then you can use Clang Format and settle uh, uh, something for everything. Um, and there is even a a configuration file for the Qt coding style, if you use the Qt coding style. Um, so you can, it's in the Qt repo tools, I just put it, a URL here. Um, but there are many, many coding styles, you can configure it, you can add your tweaks if you like to have your braces in, in one line or, or, in the, or whatever, then you just configure that with a, with a config file that you store into your, you can store it in your repository or, for example. And one of the, the objections that people have, they say, I don't want to have a big commit that changed my whole source code, so I, there is no way I can use Clang Format. But fear not, because there is tools like Git Clang Format. So I will demonstrate this tool. So uh, I, just made a, I just made a commit here with some, some code, and then I, I will run... Uh, uh, git clang format of the previous commit. Ah, so that's the that's the demo effect. Uh, well, okay, let's let's let, let's go to the next to, not, to the next demo. <laughs> ah, sorry. Aha. So, uh, so it it and, and it detri formats your code, and then you can use this git amend, uh, uh, git commit amend, which will modify your the previous commit, and the dash p option to so it will ask question every time. So, for example, here I see uh, I I shouldn't have used a space there or. Um, and I should have used a space there, so yes, I want this commit, and then you can you can commit. And you can you can do that on if you do, for example, uh, you can do that for the if you want to do that for the eight previous commits, you can do, use this nice uh, dash x argument to rebase. Which will execute uh, execute the same command for every commit in your rebase. So that's the thing, and then it will go, and then same thing. You can uh, fix the. I mean, this is this is we understand to fix the commit before you push them up upstream, and and then you fix your commits. Uh, I mean, this one had a space too much, and then you git rebase. Continue and so on. Um, so then, let's quickly move on to the make your own tool section. So, why would you even want to write your own tool? Um, well, perhaps you have a you also have a library 
So for example, you're using Qt, but you might also develop your own library, and you also want this kind of specific tool that matches some specific pattern in your code for which you, won't, you would want warnings, or you want to, you want to re-implement mock in some way, or, or something similar for your own, own needs. Anything that w would want to parse C or C++, you should probably use something like Clang. Um, so Clazy is an example with Qt, LibreOffice, they also have this, uh, a bunch of compiler thing in the, in the repository with a lot of plugins. And they have a nice uh, uh, documentation about how to write the plugin for, for LibreOffice. Um, so one thing to know is that there's two API in Clang. So there is a C API and a C++ API. The C API is a wrapper around the C++ API in which everything, so the, the C++ API exposes everything, but do not maintain any compatibility. So they, they change uh, their class around. While this, the C API is, is more limited, um, but maintain some sort of compa compatibility. So which one do you want? Um, so it, it depends on what effort you want to keep up, uh, to have to keep up with old version, uh, with new version. When, when Clang upgrades, um, in my experience, it's not too hard to upgrade, but still, they do, a lot, they do changes, so it, it is something to consider. If you use the C API, you won't have this, but maybe you will need to contribute upstream to the change because you want access to things that were not done because it's done on a need basis. So if nobody needed to use the C API for that before, it's not there, so you need to do it yourself and, and upstream that. It's quite easy to upstream stuff in Clang. And if you want a compiler plugin, then you need to use the C++ API. So I think my time is up, so um, I will be still answering maybe a, a couple of questions. So thank you, Olivier. If there are any questions, <laughs> try to get the microphone. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering what is, uh, what are the changes, the major changes in Clang in the past 12 months, and where is it heading for tools developers? Um, so the the changes in. Yeah. So basically, major changes in Clang for ah. tools developers, basically for in the past few months or couple of years. Okay. So first of all, they. They implemented C++, they, ke they keep up with the new standard, so they implemented C++ 17. Um, but there is also two, so there's this new, uh, the, there's the Clang, they developed this Clang daemon. So this Clang daemon is some daemon that runs in the background, which the IDE can, uh, can query to do some reformatting or, to, or to, uh, to find symbols and things like that. So that's, they're just implementing that as we speak. Um, other than that, every, every there is, I don't, I'm not aware of, of many more changes, no. Um, maybe there was a question there? Thank you. So, um, so you have written some tools that do this sort of uh, operation. So, for example, uh, how much effort would it be to make something that, for example, looks for inline methods in some file and says, no, 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 stop doing the inline thing? Because, you know, legacy code, it was mm -hmm. a good thing some once. So, so you want to move, you move, move code from one place to the other. So how much effort is it, like, from a coding point of view and a yes, project point of so view? So it requires a bit of, of getting into this because the, the library, so it's, as usual, when you, when you move to a new API, you, you need to learn a bit about the, how the AST is and things like that, but um, it's, it's quite, it's quite simple. These kind of things are quite simple because you can match functions that are inline and then you can rewrite it 
uh, in some other place if you can detect in which C++ file do you want. So maybe you know that this, if you're on foo.h, you probably want it in foo.cpp, and then you, you rewrite it in foo.cpp. So that's, that's actually quite easy. It just needs, you just need to get used to the AST, used to, used to the API. It's not too complicated. Um, and then, and then you can get your refactoring tool. And once you start using the AST, and for example, you, you take uh, a CPP file and you have your inline functions another place and you stick it into the AST of the CPP file. No, Will it no, reformat no. everything? So that's Th not no, possible? That's, that's not how it works. So in order to, when, you, when you do a rewrite thing, so you have the AST, and the AST tells you exactly in, in which part of the code it is every node, but you don't, you don't modify the AST. You, so you, act, you will actually know, oh, I want to change my code, so you know where you want to change it, and then you, you do, you replace it string, string base. I think the time is up. And okay, we just one more last, very short question. Sorry. There you go. Uh, I have one question about the memory sanitizer. Mm -hmm. that, is it aware of the Q object tree and the uh, memory management of the Q object tree? So the memory sanitizer, um, no. Uh, um, uh, yes, it is. So, the, um, so there's two tools. There's the address sanitizer and the memory sanitizer. And the address sanitizer uh, is just aware every ma it intercept malloc and every malloc is is taken care of um, for the for the uh, for the uh, memory sanitizer, which needs to know if the uh, the memory is initialized or not. It needs to know that Qt had initialized this memory, and so in this, in order to do that, it needs to instrument the Qt code as well. But yes, it works with uh, it. It knows about Q object. Yes, I mean it doesn't need to know. It knows about what you comp what you compile. The 